Hello viewers, I am Dr. Moshmi and today I am going to talk about transformation techniques that is the calcium chloride method of transformation and electrophoresin method. I would also like to mention that this presentation has been prepared as a part of the initiative taken by the Zoological Society of Assam to reach out the undergraduate and the postgraduate students of geology. So let us begin today's discussion. So what we can learn from this presentation? From this presentation, we will understand about bacterial transformation technique that is carried out in laboratories. We will also learn about different methods of transformation and the role of transformation in recombinant DNA technology. But before we go to the details of the principles and methods involved in this technique, I would like to mention a brief background related to this topic. I am sure that all of you have already studied about recombinant DNA technology in your 10 plus 2 level. However, I would like to state few points related to this technology which will be like a brush up of your existing knowledge. We are all aware of the fact that, that the advent of the recombinant DNA technology brought revolutionary changes to the various fields of biology contributing to the development in many areas like food production, health, medicine, agriculture, and bioengineering. And transformation in laboratory is just a part of the recombinant DNA technology. Recombinant DNA technology is used to prepare a DNA molecule by combining two or more DNA segments derived from various sources. So with the help of this recombinant DNA technology, large number of identical DNA molecules can be prepared and which is also known as cloning. And cloning involves the isolation of specific DNA segments from the genomic DNA, which is very larger in size from a host organism with the help of restriction enzymes. The restriction enzymes helps to cut the DNA at specific sequences and then inserting it to a carrier DNA or a vector to create a recombined DNA molecule. Such recombined molecule is transferred to a eukaryotic or prokaryotic host cell such as bacteria where the recombinant DNA replicates as the host cell divide. However, the host cells are not always ready to take up the foreign DNA. So we use a technique called transformation to make them the accept the foreign DNA. Here I have also mentioned some important concepts and terms used in the transformation technique. So what is a plasmid? A plasmid is an extra chromosomal DNA present in many bacterial cells and it is called extra chromosomal because the plasmid DNA is present in addition to their genomic DNA. Then what is a plasmid vector? Vector is actually a delivering agent. It is called a delivery agent because the DNA sequence of our interest that we want to use for making multiple copies must go inside a host bacterial cell to replicate. But the DNA segments cannot go inside the host cell by itself. So it requires to be joined with a plasmid to enter inside the host cell. And this is achieved by the process of transformation. And then what is an insert? The foreign DNA to be inserted or ligated with the plasmid that is called as the insert. Here I would also like to mention so another important point that a plasmid should have some properties to become a suitable vector. Like in this image, uh, we can see that a plasmid has an antibiotic resistant genes, which I am showing with the green color and an origin of replication site which I have showed with the orange color and this origin of replication site allows the initiation of replication within the plasmid and then a multiple cloning site which contains several restriction sites and an insert that I have shown in the blue color. Now how can we define the transformation? We can define the transformation as that the transformation is a process through which some species of DNA can acquire the exogenous DNA from the surrounding environment. 
So transformation is a naturally occurring process with very low frequency of foreign DNA uptake. This natural, natural transformability of bacteria was first reported by Frederick Griffith in 1928. But the first protocol for laboratory transformation was first proposed by de Mantel and Higa in 1970. However, as I have already mentioned, the bacterial cells are not always ready to accept the foreign DNA. Because DNA is a hydrophilic molecule, and the superphosphate backbone of the DNA is polar, which makes it a hydrophilic molecule. And apart from this, DNA is also proportionally large to permeate through the cell membrane. So normally it is difficult for the DNA to pass through the bacterial cell membrane. Therefore, our molecular biologists have enhanced the process by applying some technique to make the cells ready to accept the foreign DNA. These cells are, are that are ready to Take up the foreign DNA is now called as the competent cells. Now what are the different types of transformation methods? In laboratories, the two types of transformation methods are widely applied. They are the calcium chloride transformation method and electrophoresis method. So laboratory transformation can also be called as the artificial DNA internalization process. Now the key steps that involved in the bacterial transformation. The first key step is the preparation of the competent cells. For this, the fresh colony of bacterial strain is taken out from the agar plate and then introduced into a liquid medium for the starter culture. The subsequent culture is monitored carefully for the active growth. Then the cells are harvested in the mid lock phase to obtain higher transformation efficiency. The harvested cell can be processed to make competent cells according to the methods of transformation. Now we will discuss about the first method that is the calcium chloride method. This method is also called as the chemical method of transformation. The harvested cells are chemically prepared by incubating in calcium chloride to make the cell membrane more permeable. As both the foreign DNA and the bacterial cells are having negative charges, a repulsion force is formed between these two. And calcium is a divalent cation, so it can bind to both negatively charged cell and the DNA and thus neutralizes the ch charge altogether. Also, the calcium ions bound to the cell membrane, cell surface and the DNA as well helps the DNA to encourage in the cell membrane. Now, the prepared competent cells can be used immediately or can be stored at appropriate temperature that is minus 70 degrees centigrade for the further use. The cells can also can be allocated to small volumes to minimize the freeze and thaw cycles. <coughs> competent cells are to be taken out from the minus 70 just before the transformation. The first step involves mixing of the competent cells and the plasmid DNA. And we can do the mixing by briefly centrifuging them for 30 seconds or more. And the first step is followed by the by incubation of cells on the eyes. And at the same time, a 42 degree temperature is maintained in a water bath. And then the heat shock treatment is given by transferring the cells from the eyes to the water bath which is at 42 degrees centigrade now. The temperature should be exactly 42 degrees centigrade neither too low nor too high and the cells are kept in the water bath for exactly 30 seconds and the heat shock lowers the negativity inside the cell which ultimately allows the movement of negatively charged DNA to the cell's interior. Then Immediately the cells are taken back to the eyes and the subsequent cold shock again bring back the membrane potential to its original value. As now the cells are returned to the eyes for about 2 minutes and the soft medium and nutritionally rich bacterial medium is added to the cells now. Here in this figure we can see the whole chemical treatment process that is the Competent incubation of the competent cells in the eyes, then giving them the heat shock treatment, then again taking back to the eyes.
ne then the next step is the colony formation the cells with the medium are now placed in a shaking incubator for about one hour at a temperature of 37 degrees centigrade after the one hour the transformation mix from the vials are pipetted to the laurea brought plates with appropriate antibiotic for the colony formation so appropriate antibiotic means if the plasmid that we use for confer that we, that we use that can confer resistance against penicillin then we should use ampicillin in the plates or if it confers resistance against tetramycin or other antibiotic like canamycin then we can use tetramycin or canamycin or any other such antibiotic so incubation is done overnight at 37 degrees centigrade and the colony formation can be seen next day morning then we come to the next method that is the electroporation method in this electroporation method the competent cells and dns are exposed to a brief pulse of high voltage electric field with the help of an electroporator and prior to this electroporation the harvested cells are washed with the ice cold deionized water several times to remove the salts and other components that may interfere with the electroporation technique in this image we can see that after washing the cells are uh, the cells are kept in the refrigerator for the further use and prior to the electroporation, the bacterial cells are also mixed with the recombinant plasmid and the mixture is pipetted into cuvette and the cuvette is inserted into the electroporator. Then the electric pulse is ditches through the cell suspension present inside the cuvette for a few microseconds to a millisecond. This electric pulse disturbs the phospholipid bilayer of the membrane and results in the formation of temporary pores. This allows the charged molecules like DNA to move across the membrane through the pores. Then the recovery of the transformed cells. Immediately after the electroporation, liquid medium is added to the cubet containing bacteria and the tube is incubated at the bacteria's optimal temperature for an hour or more to allow the recovery of the cells. During this phase, the membrane is also repaired, closing down the open pores and expression of the plasmid to confer its antibiotic resistance property. The disadvantage of electroporation method is substantial cell death caused by the high voltage pulses which actually reduce the viability of cells then arcing which is actually the high salt concentration in the medium and sometimes the membrane repair is not successful and also requires the use of more quantities of cells compared to the chemical transfection methods. So following the electroporation, the transformation cells are cultured in the soft medium at 37 degrees centigrade for one hour with the shaking at 225 rpm. After growing in the shock medium, the cells are now directly plated in the alveolar plate with appropriate antibiotic and the plates are incubated for overnight at 37 degrees centigrade and the cultured plates are examined next day morning so this process after the recovery uh, the process is similar for both the, both the electroporation and chemical treatment method and the prolonged incubation of cultured plates are avoided because it creates large colony uh, formation fusing with each other and it is very difficult to pick up the colony when one colony is fused with other. And then the last one is uh, that is using of, uh, we can also calculate the transformation efficiency by using some formulas, but here I have not given that uh, use of that formula. Now after completion of this both the techniques like uh, both the transformation method like the electroporation or chemical or calcium chloride um, technique, uh, how we are going to screen that the cells are transformed or not? The plasmid of the vector that contains antibiotic resistance gene that is ampicillin or tetramycin, the appropriate antibiotic added to the agar plate that is used to plate the transformed cells. So the cells which are transformed not only are with successfully ligated vector and insert will survive in the media or the plate. When the insert and the vector will be ligated successfully, 
then only the plasmid can confer the drug resistance ability to the transformed cells and they will grow. So bacteria without the vector lack the antibiotic resistance gene and will not grow. Thus the antibiotic resistance allows the selection for uptake of the plasmid with an insert. There are many other mechanisms also to screen that the cells are transformed or not. So here in this figure, I have tried to summarize the whole process. Um, here we can see a plasmid with antibiotic resistance in insert and origin. So plasmid with this with the insert is transformed to bacterial, bacterial cell by transformation and the cells are then plated in the LB agar medium and the cells with the plasmid uh, with the transformed plasmid will be able to grow now. So uh, what we have learned from this presentation, we have learned about the transformation technique and we have also learned that we can follow two methods uh, to, for this transformation technique, the chemical chloride method, calcium chloride method and the electroporosin method. And mostly in laboratories, the calcium chloride method is mostly used. And then we can, uh, in both the techniques, the transformed cells are plated in agar plates in agar medium, LB agar medium and uh, in the plates we can see that whether a successful transformation has occurred or not and then we can proceed after the successful transformation we can proceed with the steps of uh, with the other steps for the recomb steps of the recombinant DNA technology. So for this presentation, to prepare this presentation, I have gone through some of the research papers and books. And uh, the first uh, review paper that I have mentioned in this uh, reference and suggested reading portion, that is the revisiting the mechanism involved in calcium chloride induced bacterial transformation that was published in Fontrier's of Microbiology. This one is this review paper is very useful. And it is available on the internet and so students can go through the paper easily and I have also mentioned about some other books and papers and students can go through these books and papers if they want to prepare their own notes on the transformation technique so I think this presentation will help you so so if you have any queries related to this presentation, you can mail me at this email ID that is moshme.in20 at gmail.com. And thank you for your patience hearing. Thank you.